friends. I wanted to get on video here because I felt really called to share recently of how you get into your flow state with creating art. I know there are many of us who do not classify themselves as creative or being an artist. So a lot of times the thought of creating can be overwhelming. Simply the thought of it, not even getting to the stage of creating. So I want to help you overcome that barrier in your life. I am quickly going to show you how to get into an artistic flow state by with just having minimal amount of materials at hand. And um, this will probably be continued into a longer series of videos. But for today, I just wanted to share some quick tips on simply how to get into a flow state. So if you've ever attended any of my classes, you know that I like to provide you with these little kits. So these little envelope kits already have a variety of paper in them. So that is step one, is to gather your materials. Over here we have sheet music, which is wonderful because it already has some really cool print. This is just old dictionary paper, which is a super thin kind. I really like using that because it tends to work well when you're layering. But this here is transparent deli paper, which is used to wrap sandwiches. So it's a great find at the dollar store and you get a huge package. So tons of paper are included with that. Here you can see the deli paper right on top of the sheet music. I'm really showing you this because I want to point out how it's cool to work with transparent paper because that allows you to see little bits and pieces of what's underneath of it. So when you layer things, you can also already start to see little bits and bobs of what's poking out underneath. And then here is some tissue paper. So again, a little bit of transparency with the tissue paper. This is just dollar store tissue paper, nothing special about it. And again, if you layer that over top of something with print, you can see the print underneath. I'm going to turn the video and we're going to create a simple collage background that will help you get more into a flow state. All right, so here we are. We talked about some of the papers. So I have my paper prepared. I am in the situation going to add a little bit more texture with some papers. And these are called decoupage papers. I picked these up from Blick Art Supply in Tampa, which um, decoupage paper is really great because it all it has prints and really cool colors and patterns. Um, the paper is thin, so that it layers on top of other sheets of paper really nicely. And it uh, still has a little bit of transparency. So you can see here, there's still that little bit of transparency. Not much, not, it's not as much as the tissue paper, but it still offers you a little bit more there. Okay, so the other part in preparation is what, what am I gonna mount this paper on? So I chose just to cut down a sheet of watercolor paper. So I have small, little index cards to work with. And this is great because you can often feel really overwhelmed if you have a full sheet of paper and you're like, oh my God, I'm not an artist. I don't know where to begin with the sheet. So this is a really good um, tip for how to handle that. It gives you a little bit more bite-sized pieces and you can really get into that flow state and practice techniques because Half the battle is knowing the rules, but then, um, then you can break them. So we're going to start off with one little sheet here. So I'm going to speed up the video as I go through this process. But ultimately, all I am doing is I'm going to be tearing these pieces of paper and covering this entire cardstock. 
Okay, so here I'm placing glue on the watercolor cardstock and then I'm tearing different sheets of paper and gluing them onto the cardstock. I really wanna maintain a flow and be intuitive in this process. Now I'm moving on to a second sheet, same process, and you'll notice as I lay the paper, I might decide that a sheet is a little too big, so I'll just tear it directly off of the larger sheet once I place it on the cardstock. All right, so I covered up two of these little cards and you can see the paper is not sitting flat on either of these. So these are great. These are like little old gift cards. And what I do is I just like to give these a gentle swipe to flatten everything out, kind of unify it together might need to place a little bit more glue but i really like to work out the wrinkles a bit you don't want to swipe too hard because the paper underneath is fairly delicate um, so right here where that is popping up i'm just going to add a little bit more glue and we're just gonna gently seal that down and if there are some areas that do not seal that is okay uh, washi tape is also a really great option to use so that's looking better that's nice and flat you can see the little pieces that are um, overlapping you can just tuck those back or another option is you can just rip those off the ends so no need to play around with scissors or anything like that all right so that one is good to go I'm gonna let that dry we're gonna do the same with this here add a little bit more glue and I'm just using acrylic matte medium. I actually like to use this as my preferred glue because I can paint it on with the paintbrush and it gives me a little bit more flexibility in covering a lot more real estate at once if I'm taping on or gluing on larger sheets of paper. And I am pretty happy with this. Oh, a little more glue. And my paper is ripping right there a little bit. No worries on that at all. I'm still going to flow with it. All right. We have our overlap. We're just going to trim some of that off. Perfect. All right, so this is what I'm left with. Two little cards, and that was great. That was just enough time to get me into a little flow state of using some different materials, cutting paper with my hands, tearing paper, listening to the sound of the torn paper, and placing them on cardstock. So these are great starts to backgrounds which could then become artist trading cards. They could become little intention cards. It might become a little summertime journal. If you bind the corners together, they can become uh, little training cards for you. So if you just wanna write some steps on the back of how you created these, and then you could eventually have a whole stack of little card tutorials on different techniques and materials that you're playing around with. But I hope that inspires you to create a little more. I am going to be continuing the series on what the next steps would be with these cards. So definitely follow along and I hope to see you next time.